Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing part two of my body sunscreen review. So if you have not yet seen part one, I will put a card for that here and link it below. Definitely go check that one out first if you haven't seen it yet because I talked through some of the questions I'm asked the most about body sunscreen. So things like mineral versus chemical active ingredients, if I only use sunscreens with mineral active ingredients in them or kind of what my approach is for that. And then same thing for fragrance. What's my approach for fragrance in body sunscreen? So that's linked below. But for this video today, I have, don't tip. Hmm. <sighs> I'm losing all patience here with these things. For this review, I have a Pacifica sunscreen, two different Bare Republic sunscreens. I have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost sunscreen, and then this one technically doesn't fit into the drugstore slash affordable option, but I really wanted to include it. And it's the Hemp's Daily Herbal Body Moisturizer that has SPF included. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on these sunscreens, which ones I think are worth the money, we'll jump right into it. All right, we're gonna start off with this Bare Republic Mineral Sunscreen Gel Lotion. This one is a broad spectrum SPF 30 with 40 minutes of water resistance. It says it's ultra light and hydrating, and this one has four fluid ounces and retails for $16.99. So kind of like middle when it comes to price point, not the most affordable, but not crazy expensive. And like it says on the front, this is a mineral body sunscreen. So no chemical filters. This just has 18% zinc oxide in it as far as the active ingredients goes. This one has so many different emollient ingredients that are going to help to soften and smooth and condition the skin and really help to make this formula just feel nice and slippery and slidey and lightweight and soft. You guys get it. So shea butter is one of the primary ingredients in this formulation. Shea butter is an emollient ingredient that also has occlusive properties, making it a very nice moisturizing, conditioning, and soothing ingredient. This also has caprylic triglycerides, which are texture enhancers and emollients that will help to soften that product. And this has aloe juice and aloe leaf extract towards the very top of the label, which help to soothe the skin. And aside from that, this honestly has so many different plant extracts and oils. I was actually very surprised by that. I just wasn't expecting to see it. And a lot of them do have really nice benefits to the skin. Things with antioxidant properties, things that are going to help to soften and smooth the skin, things like sunflower seed oil, olive oil, just really rich nourishing ingredients that are going to be awesome if you have drier skin or irritated skin. But in saying that, that means that there are definitely more ingredients that could potentially irritate your skin if you do have sensitive skin. And quite a few of those plant extracts are fragrant plant extracts, so this is not a complete fragrance free product. This formulation honestly is amazing. I really don't think I felt a body sunscreen that has this specific formula yet. It is so, so good. Incredibly lightweight, but still feels so soft and hydrating on the skin. It blends out beautifully. There's no stick or tack. It doesn't look greasy. It doesn't feel greasy. It just is so nice. It's one of the very few sunscreens that I have for the body that kind of is traceless once you rub it into the skin as far as the texture goes, which is very impressive. And this one doesn't really have a white cast on me. At first, it looks like it's going to, and if I go overboard and accidentally just use too much product, then that makes it a bit harder to blend in and does leave a tiny bit of a white cast, but in using the right amount, not going overboard, it blends out really well and just doesn't really seem to have a white cast on me. If you have really deep skin, it may in that situation, but I think it just blends in very well. The one downside to this product is that it kind of smells like Play-Doh. There's something just kind of salty about it I mean, I can smell it when I'm going up to sniff it. I don't think it's something that you're gonna smell on yourself intensely throughout the day, but of course you smell it when you're applying it and rubbing it all over your body. It's just weird because a lot of the plant extracts in this were added specifically for scent because on their ingredient label, a lot of those plant extracts next to them in parentheses, it says plant derived scent constituent, meaning they added it for the smell on top of the other potential benefits. So I just find that kind of weird that for a product that is not fragrance free and has ingredients added to it specifically for the smell, 
doesn't really smell good. So it's not terrible and because I love this formulation, it's one that I still would recommend. And if you want a body sunscreen that has zinc oxide in it, that feels amazing, this is gonna be for you. I've never felt a body sunscreen with zinc in it and nothing else that has as good of a consistency and formulation as this one. So still would recommend, but if you feel like you would hate that smell, then you might wanna skip. All right, next let's move on to the second Bare Republic sunscreen that I have. Again, this is a mineral sunscreen lotion with broad spectrum SPF 50. This one says vanilla cocoa on it, but it has since been renamed to their sport sunscreen. I don't really know why. Maybe because it doesn't smell like vanilla cocoa at all. We'll get to that. So this one has both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in it. So it's 7.8% zinc oxide and 2.9% titanium dioxide, but still no chemical active ingredients. In this, you get five fluid ounces of product and it retails for $14.99. So a little bit less expensive than this one and a little bit more product. Inactive ingredients are interesting. I think this is the only body sunscreen that I've tried that has alcohol as the first ingredient. I've talked about alcohol a few times before in previous videos and that it's not an ingredient that needs to be avoided at all costs, but it is an ingredient that can pose risk for irritation and sensitivity and dryness in higher amounts, and especially when you're using it in combination with other products that have high amounts of alcohol as well. So I found that interesting that that was the first ingredient on the label. I don't love to see that in a sunscreen like this for the body, I mean in any product really, because I want it to be hydrating of course, but that doesn't mean that it still can't feel nice on the skin because it does have other ingredients that are going to help to serve that purpose. So similar to this sunscreen, it does have quite a few plant extracts that are going to help to soften, smooth, and condition the skin. Things like coconut oil, caprylic triglycerides, different forms of algae, other plant seed oils, just all things that are going to just help to, again, moisturize the skin. This one is also not fragrance-free. It does have a few different forms of synthetic added fragrance to it. The formulation of this one it's interesting because you would expect this one to be thicker and a little bit harder to blend and apply to the skin because it only has zinc oxide, but this one, the sport one or vanilla cocoa, whichever you have, definitely has a thicker consistency. It's not very easy to blend into the skin and this one definitely does leave a white cast on my skin. So I just don't really like this formula because of how hard it is to rub in. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not the worst thing in the world, but when I have other body sunscreens that blend in beautifully and feel really nice and lightweight, it's kind of like, it's not the thickest mineral sunscreen out there, but again, it's just not my favorite formulation. And I just don't like this smell either. I prefer this to this, not that I love this. It just smells kind of weird, which is why I think they probably renamed it because when you see vanilla cocoa on the front of a product, you expect it to smell like vanilla, have a nice light sweet scent. This does not smell like vanilla. I don't even know what this smells like. Kind of Play-Doh-y again, but like with other things going on. I just don't really like it. So this is one that I personally wouldn't recommend. I think, you know, you have this option right here, which is also mineral, 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 and scents both have fragrance in them. It's like you're not really getting a benefit here, except for the fact that there's a little bit more product and it's a little bit more affordable, but I think you can skip that. Okay, next we have the Pacifica C and C, S-E-A plus C, like vitamin C. Body Milk. This says it's a broad spectrum SPF 30. It has vitamin C and marine extracts in it. And this one has five fluid ounces and retails for $14.99. Active ingredients here are octisalate, octocrylene, and 7% zinc oxide. So we have a mineral chemical combination formulation here. Combination. There is some sort of gnat in here. And it was literally like, I hope you guys couldn't see that. 
Anyway, before I just spazzed, we have a mineral chemical filter combination sunscreen. This one also does have some really nice ingredients in it as well. So I talked about this in my first sunscreen review. And again, I'm not gonna try to butcher the name, so I'll put it right here. This ingredient is very nice and lightweight and silky and just helps to make sunscreens more cosmetically elegant and also helps to stabilize unstable chemical active ingredients. This also has caprylic triglycerides in it, glycerin, jojoba esters, different things that are going to moisturize and nourish the skin, as well as different forms of plant extracts like algae and kelp extract. On top of that, it actually does have vitamin C and vitamin E in it. And believe it or not, they're not at the very bottom of the ingredient label, which always surprises me when it comes to a product like this. So those are just both antioxidants that are really nice for the skin. This one does have fragrance in it. It's listed as parfum, but it's very last on the ingredient label. So if you're somebody that can get away with fragrance sometimes in smaller amounts, this one might be a safer bet for you than some of the others that we've talked about. And the formula of this, I really wanted to love this so much, you guys, because I really like the ingredient label. And when you first get the product out of the tube, it's very liquidy and lightweight and just seems like something that's going to be very nice on the skin. And while it blends in really easily and does have hydrating properties, it just leaves a noticeable stick on the skin. It's one of the tackiest body sunscreens that I have tried in a while and probably that I've reviewed here for you guys. So because of that, I just don't really love this sunscreen. I mean, it might not be sticky on you. Keep that in mind. Everybody has different skin. Everyone's skin responds differently. It's just this slight tack on my skin. If that was removed, it would be perfect and I would love this. And also there doesn't seem to be an apparent white cast with this one. And then the smell of this is so interesting. It smells minty, which is confusing to me. I just don't love that. I don't really like anything mint scented at all for the body. Pretty much the only thing I want to smell minty is my toothpaste and mouthwash. So, uh, bombed. I really wanted to love that one. It's not going to be a total no for everybody because again, like I said, I like the ingredients and maybe that won't be sticky on you. And maybe some of you love the smell of mint on your body. So I think it still works. It's just not something that really works for me. All right, next we have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel Lotion. Again, this is a broad spectrum, SPF 50. It has three fluid ounces and retails for $9.99, so definitely not the most affordable for the amount of product that you get. It says it has an invisible finish and it's non-greasy. This one only has chemical filters, so it has avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene, and oxybenzone. And for this one, aside from glycerin, which is the second ingredient on the label, there really isn't anything in this formula that stands out to me, that really impresses me. Denatured alcohol is the third ingredient, so keep that in mind. If that ingredient irritates you or you have extremely dry skin or sensitive skin, this might be a problem. And this also has an ingredient in it called menthol lactate, which is a fragrant plant extract that is definitely something that can be irritating and sensitizing to the skin. It has a cooling sensation to it, which is very bizarre. We'll talk about that in a sec. And then this does have hyaluronic acid in the formulation. That is kind of the signature of this Hydro Boost line, but it's one of the very last ingredients before Violet 2 and Blue 1, which are dyes, which could also be something that irritates your skin. So I just am really not impressed by this ingredient label. The formulation of this, I mean, it is really, really nice at first. It, I mean, it feels good, you guys. It's very lightweight. It's one of those that starts to feel almost watery as you start to blend it out into the skin. It blends easily. There's no streakiness or sticking or sliding. It doesn't leave a sticky residue on the skin. It just feels good. It actually dries down matte, but makes your skin look glowy, in my opinion. So it does feel very hydrating, but as it starts to dry, you do, I mean, at least I do, definitely start to feel that cooling sensation. And it's just kind of bizarre. I've never used a body sunscreen that has a cooling sensation to it, so it kind of starts to tingle. And I could definitely see how this could be a huge issue for people that have sensitive skin or skin conditions. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, then of course go for it. It's just not something that I loved. And then because I'm just not really impressed with the rest of the ingredient label, I'm like, I don't feel like this is something, this, 
that fly. Oh my gosh, I probably just had my eyes crossed to the other side of my head. Because of that, it's just not one that I would say is at the top of my list. I wouldn't actively recommend it. I don't think you need to run out and purchase it, but you know, to each their own. And then this one, I actually do like the smell of this. It kind of just has a slightly sunscreeny smell, but barely. I don't really know how to describe it because it's barely there. But I would say this one has the best smell out of the ones that we have talked about so far. And finally, we have the Hemp's Pure Herbal Extracts Daily Herbal Body Moisturizer. This is in the scent Yuzu and Starfruit and is a broad spectrum SPF 30, enriched with 100% pure hemp seed oil. This one I just wanted to include because, spoiler alert, I love it so much. Just heard a weird noise. That was me squeezing this. <laughs> that probably sounded like a fart to be honest. Okay, <laughs> ah, grow up. So this one has 8.5 fluid ounces in it and retails for $29.95. So totally not going to be a super inexpensive option, but Hemp's frequently runs buy one, get one 40% off at Ulta. So keep your eye out for that if this is something that you feel like you really want and then maybe purchase it then. So active ingredients here are all chemical filters. We have avobenzone, homosalate, octinazate, and octisalate. And the ingredients here, you guys, oh my gosh, while it is not fragrance-free, it has so many amazing ingredients in it that are going to condition and nourish and soften and moisturize and smooth and everything, the skin. So some of those ingredients that really stand out to me that are at the top of the label are glycerin, jojoba extract, hemp seed oil, and shea butter. But this just has even more ingredients throughout the rest of the label that are really impressive to me. So things like jojoba seed oil, safflower oil, sunflower seed oil, and mango extract. Ooh just really, really nice skin conditioning ingredients. This does have a couple different citrus extracts in it. So that is one of the forms of fragrance in this product. If you know that citrus irritates your skin, then just be aware that is present. Oh, you guys. I mean, this by far is the best formulation out of all of the body sunscreens that I have reviewed so far on this channel because it's literally just a lotion that also has SPF 30 in it. It feels so effing good. I've been obsessed with hemp lotions for years. They are seriously incredible. Probably the best body lotion formulation I've ever tried. They're, oh, they're so good and i'm somebody that definitely starts to get dry skin and itchy skin pretty easily on the body if i don't properly moisturize or if i use moisturizers that don't have the best ingredients and hemp has never let me down so i'm not surprised i'm so obsessed with this it feels so good like this is the type of thing that makes you want to apply it and makes you just not even feel like you have sunscreen on oh. also I love the smell. Oh, <laughs> like freaking out over here. This smells so good. It's just a good mix between floral and fruit without being too overpowering and without being too sweet. It doesn't smell sugary because I hate that. It just smells really good and fresh and bright but not too intense. So I know that this one is a little bit pricier, so that's kind of annoying, but honestly, it is so worth the price in my opinion. And just check and wait and see when they do that BOGO 40 deal because I feel like they do that all the time. All right, you guys, so that is everything for this video and for my body sunscreen reviews for now. That's probably gonna be it for body sunscreens for the rest of this summer. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Again, let me know in the comments, are any of these your favorite? Have you tried any? Are you interested in trying any of them after watching this video? I am very curious. We'll chat in the comments below. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that in the comments as well. I would love to do that for you. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. It really supports my channel. And other than that, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.